Welcome to another video. This video is in collaboration with Dr. PK Math. We're doing this together. He is solving it using another technique, which I think may be a lot easier than what I'm doing because I think I trapped myself by promising that I'm gonna solve it using just basic algebra. This is a hard question for me to solve. Well, if you find an easy way or an easier way to solve this, let me know. Please check out his channel and um, see how he solves this problem. I think I'm gonna watch it too and see what he has in stock. Let's get into the video. Why is this equation a hard equation to solve? Number one, I am not sure of how many solutions I'm supposed to get. What do you do first? In order to be safe, when you solve equations like this, you want to know what can be the answer and what cannot be the answer. So, what cannot be the answer? It's obvious. Under the square root sign, you can have a negative. So, what would make this negative? It is if this number is less than negative 2. Because when you have anything less than negative 2, you're going to have a negative under the square root sign. So, we can say the domain of our solution Let's put it this way, domain of solution will be x must be greater than or equal to negative 2. We know that one. Okay, but because there is a square root sign here, whatever comes out of a square root must be non-negative. So it means this 2 cannot be negative, which means x cubed minus 3x must be at least zero. Okay, so we also know, and I know I'm writing it in words, but I just want you to see it. We know that x cubed minus 3x must be greater than or equal to zero. I just checked out what I did now, and I noticed that this actually covers this, because if this is greater than zero, then this is in this, the solution, the domain of this. So we might as well just restrict whatever we're doing to this condition, because this condition is satisfied by this condition. Okay, but just in case you're not sure, I'm leaving both of them, okay? Now, what do you do first? Obviously, there's a square root sign. You wanna square both sides. I don't have any other strategy. I told you it's gonna be brute force, and I'm gonna struggle through it. So we're gonna square both sides. We have x cubed minus 3x, all squared, will be equal to x plus 2. Um, basic algebra, if we FOIL this out, we square any binomial, it's going to be the square of the first, which is going to be x to the sixth, minus, you multiply these two, you're going to get 3x to the fourth, but there's going to be two of it, so that's going to be 6x to the fourth, then the square of this is going to be 9x squared equals x plus 2. And then if we have everything together, it's going to be x to the 6th minus 6x to the 4th plus um, 9x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to 0. Remember, I'm looking for all real roots. Oh, I forgot to state that at the beginning. We're looking for all real roots, okay? Now, Basically, from the rational roots theorem, it's easy for me to guess numbers based on this number here. What numbers can divide negative 2? 1, minus 1, 2, and minus 2. Now, I'm going to try out the 1s, but the 1s will not work. How do I know they won't work? If you want to know if 1 is going to work, just look at all the coefficients and add them up and see if they give you 0. So if I say 1 minus 6, that's minus 5. Minus 5 plus 9 is plus 4. Plus 4 minus 1 is 3, 3 minus 2 is 1. Oh, almost. So 1 doesn't work. Neither does negative 1 if you try it. Neither does negative 2 if you try it. The only number that clearly works when you try to plug them in is 2, not negative 2. So x equals 2 actually divides this by the rational roots theorem and the remainder theorem if you plug them in. Okay? So I'm going to say by the rational roots theorem and the remainder theorem, when you plug in 2, you're going to get 0. That means that 2 is a solution. So we can say by the remainder theorem, 
remainder theorem, x equals 2 is a root. Let's just put it that way. x equals 2 is a root. And if we know that x equals 2 is a root, we can find the other root by doing, what do we call it? Or we can find the other factors by doing synthetic division. So by synthetic division, we can write all the coefficients of this polynomial, which is going to be 1. So we're going to put 2 here. So this is going to be 1. There's no fifth power, so we write 0. Fourth power is negative 6. Third power is not there, we write 0. Second power is 9. First power is minus 1. And the last power is minus 2. So these are all the numbers that we have. So we draw a line and we put zero here and we begin. One plus zero is one, one times two is two. Zero plus two is two, two times two is four. Minus six, time, uh, minus six plus four is uh, minus two. Minus two times two is minus four. Zero plus minus four is minus four. Minus four times two is minus eight. 9 plus minus 8 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2. Minus 1 plus 2 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, and minus 2 plus 2 is 0. This tells us that 2 is a solution because it gives us a 0 as a remainder in the end. So now we have a new polynomial. So this polynomial that we have here is, can actually be written as, so let's call this to be y equals this. So now we can say that y or f of x. Let's, let's call it f of x. Okay. So we can say now f of x is now equal to the factor that contains x and x equals 2 plus this one. So this is a fifth degree polynomial. So we're going to have x minus 2. See, this is x minus 2 because if you move this 2 over to this side, it tells you x minus 2 equals 0, okay? So, um, what we have is x minus 2 times, this polynomial has, uh, is a fifth degree polynomial because this was a sixth degree polynomial and you divided it by a first degree polynomial, x minus 2. So, we're going to have x to the fifth plus 2x to the fourth. This is what you have. So it's now our job. We already know that this is equal to zero. So it's our job that it is this equals zero or this equals zero. If this equals zero, then x equals two, which we already knew. That's how we got here. Now we need to solve this polynomial. Okay? So, ah, let's call this polynomial g of x. Okay? Want to um, solve g of x equals this, okay? I don't want to write everything. So what's going to happen? Unless you plot the graph, or you know how to factor this, this becomes very hard, or you know how to solve a quintic equation, and it was not the path that I wanted to take but it led me here. But I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm going to do what I do best. I'm going to use all the strategies that I can to figure out how this one can be factored, because it can be factored. So what I know is, because the very last term is one, if it can be factored, each of the things you are gonna multiply must end in one, because the factors of 1 are 1 and 1, or minus 1 and minus 1, but they, they have to be the same thing. And because the, it, this is to the fifth power, you must be multiplying a cubic equation by a quadratic equation, or a fourth power, which is a quartic equation, by a linear equation. But I looked at this, there's nothing linear you can, you, you can factor out. I tried it, it didn't work out. So it's not linear. It has to be quadratic and cubic. So I'm going to say that g of x will be, now this is guesswork I'm about to do. That's why I said this was hard. I know that the first term here is going to be x squared. And the first term here is going to be x cubed. The last term is going to be 1. The last term here is going to be 1. Now, is this going to be plus 1 or minus 1? I don't know. 
And I'm also counting on the fact that because this is positive, this is positive, this is positive. So that's where we're going to start. Now, this is x squared. We only need one more term here, right? We need one more term. We need x, but we don't know if it's going to be plus x or minus x or plus 2x or plus 3x. We don't know how many x's are going to be there, but something is going to be here. So wait, let's leave it some, let's, let's work on the smaller one because the only thing you need to guess is this middle one. If you get this, you can always get this one because you can do a long division process, you know, carry out the long division process, you're going to get this one. So focus on this, focus. Okay, now, let's focus on this guy. 2x to the fourth. So this is going to have, okay, let's not, we don't know what the coefficients are going to be, but we know there's going to be x squared and there's going to be x. Okay, in order to get two of this, it is guaranteed that this guy is going to multiply this guy in order to get x to the fourth. It is also guaranteed that this guy is going to multiply x in the middle here to get x to the fourth. No other multiplication is going to generate that. And because we already said these two are single, it is correct for you to assume that, if you remember, I said correct to assume, it is safe to assume that this is going to be plus x. And to assume that this is going to be plus x also. At this point, I want to stop guessing, okay? Because um, I, I really would like someone to show me how to solve um, this kind of equation in a fast way. This is painful. So I'm not going to guess anymore. I'm going to assume that what I have is x squared plus x either plus one or minus one. I don't care what it is, okay? I'm going to try to divide this quintic uh, expression, polynomial, with this. Remember, if this divides this, I'm going to get a remainder of zero. That's what's important. It doesn't matter what this looks like, okay? So let's do long division. So I'm going to do long division. I chose negative one. I have a strong feeling that everything cannot be positive, otherwise we won't have these negatives here, right? That's, the com that's very commonsensical, I don't know if that word exists, but that's what I'm doing. So let's do long division. We're going to say, how do you do long division? For some people, they get confused at this. How many, what would you multiply this by to get this? That's how you solve, well, that's how you do long division. Ask yourself, what would I multiply this by to get x to the fifth? It's going to be x cubed. You write it here. You multiply everything here by x cubed. So this is going to be x to the fifth. This times this is going to be plus x to the fourth. This times this is going to be minus x cubed. And then you subtract. So this minus this is just x to the fourth. This minus this is just going to be minus 2 minus minus 1, which is going to be minus 1. So minus x cubed. And then you bring this down, bring down all of them, okay? You can just put zero, zero here because they're not involved in this calculation we did. So you don't get confused. You bring everything down, you get minus 4x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, you start the process again. What would I multiply x squared by to get x to the fourth? It's going to be x squared. You use x squared to multiply each of these and you write them all down here. We start subtracting. This will become zero. Don't write the zero. It confuses you. Minus x cubed minus x cubed is going to be minus 2x cubed. And then this minus this is minus 4 minus minus 1 is going to be plus 3. Is that 3? No, it's going to be minus 3x squared. And then this is plus x plus 1. Nice. We begin the process again. What would I multiply this by to get minus 2x cubed? It's going to be minus 2x. So minus 2x times this is minus 2x cubed. Minus 2x times this is minus 2x squared. Minus 2x times minus 1 is going to be plus 2x. 
and then you put zero here since there's nothing there. Okay, this is gone. What do you have here? You're gonna have minus, minus three plus two is gonna be minus x squared. And this is gonna be x, one minus two is minus x, and this is plus one. And that's the final stage. Now, what would you multiply this by to get this? It's gonna be minus one. I was right. Both of them have minus one. So what you have is, um, where is it? Minus one times this is gonna be minus x squared, minus x squared, plus one. When you subtract, everything is zero. So I clearly know that this polynomial can be written as this times this. Okay, I took the time to write out everything I've done so far, and so far so good. All I've done is just factor the polynomial. I told you this was hard, especially if you do it this way. There just has to be a better way. I took the time to express everything we've done so far, and I listed them out in steps. And you can see that all I've done is just a factor of the polynomial. But after factoring, it is easy for me to see what I need to solve. So at this point, I can solve for this one. x minus 2 is equal to 0 implies x is equal to 2. And I'll quickly run back here and plug in x equals 2 to see if the answer is valid. Because remember, I don't know how many solutions I'm supposed to get. So, if I go here, I'm going to get 8 minus 6 must be equal to 2. Well, this is the square root of 2 plus 2. That's square root of 4, which gives me 2. So, 2 is a valid answer. We take it. We go here, we're going to have the second one. x squared plus x minus 1 is equal to 0. What does it tell you? This implies that... Oh, we're going to use the quadratic formula because this cannot be factored. So, we're going to say x is equal to minus b, that's minus 1, plus or minus square root of, b squared is 1, minus 4ac will be plus 4, that's going to be 5, and this is over 2. So, we're going to get two answers from here, we're going to get x equals minus 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, and minus 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. If we put this in our calculator, if we do it in our head, this is, this is square root of 5 is 2.23 minus 1, that's 1 1.2, 0 0.6, so 0 0.6 there about. So this is about 0 0.6. If you plug it in here, it's not going to satisfy this because 3 times 0 0.6 is bigger than 0 0.6 cubed. That's surprising. So it's going to be negative, and we don't want a negative because this is a square root. Anything that comes out has to be positive. So this is not valid. But if we take this, this is about negative 1.61 or something, 1.618. This will be valid because when you plug it in here, this is going to turn out to be positive, and it's still less than this, so it's going to be correct. So this is valid. This is not valid, so we're going to accept this answer as valid. And the third one is this one, number three. This is a cubic equation that's going to take me 30 minutes to solve. Yeah, I'm not going to solve this in this video, but there is a solution that is hidden inside this cubic function coming in a dedicated video. <laughs> That's the best I can do right now. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.